All right, guys, hola, bienvenidos, welcome, and welcome back. If you're not subscribed yet, please do so. So we'll see how this video goes. There's a lot of noise outside. Um, got the neighbor's roosters, got the uh, bugs in full effect, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, uh, today I wanted to talk about temperature and how we use different types of tools to read temperature. Now, if you uh, ever go work on an AC unit or something like that, you need to know supply temp, return temp. Um, it's also good to know the temperature of the refrigerant lines and stuff like that. So one pet peeve of mine, and if anybody has ever worked with me and they want me to help them over the phone or help them troubleshoot something and they have their gauges hooked up, I don't like to know pressures. I hate that they're like, I got this this on my suction, this on my, my high side or whatever. And I'm like, I don't care what the pressure is. And this is back in the day when it was like just R22, 134, and we were starting to use like 404. Even with those, because on a, on a gauge set, you can get them to where you have um, 134, 404, R22 and 410, so that's how mine is set up. So back in the day, I could get away with analog. Um, it's kind of hard to recommend analog nowadays. I, I still like to use them, but um, for the most part, there's too many refrigerants now to rely on something like that, that has the uh, pressure temperature uh, chart on it, where you might not even be using one of those refrigerants. So. That's a whole other story, but uh, basically you can get away with just having those there. And I would always, t always tell my guys, like, don't read me the outside pressure, read me the inside temperature. I need to know if we're overheating. I need to know what our uh, saturation is as far as like if we're cooling and stuff. So I've always been a temperature person. It's, it's always been ingrained in me, like, I guess from school, I don't know, maybe. Um, that temperature is more important than a, a number, a PSI number. So temperature, temperature, temperature. Uh, it'll tell you if you're low on charge. It'll tell you if you have a restriction. It'll tell you if you're overheating. It'll tell you like a plug condensers, uh, iced up evaporator. It'll tell you anything. Temperature will tell you everything. So I think that's the most important thing for your troubleshooting and diagnosing is understanding temperature and don't think about the pressure. Now over uh, experience, you're gonna know what PSI more or less you, you should have. So R22, as long as you're between 50 and 70, you're fine. Uh, 134 is a bit tricky. It's usually under 20. It could be down as far as, as one, under five, and you'll be fine. And then something like 410, you're gonna be over 100. So the PSI varies a lot, but the temperature is always gonna be the same. It's always gonna be a certain temperature that you're looking for and a certain temperature like on the high side that you don't wanna go over. All right, so I'm gonna go over a few different things that I like to use. Oh crap, that's one. And uh, we're gonna be talking about different situations. I got a whole bunch of other tools in there. Uh, this is kind of my hold all in the front cabin for now. And the reason I have so many of these is because I've actually been testing a few of them. So I'll show you which ones I personally bought and which ones were sent out to me. And then we'll go over a whole layout and different options that you can have to check temperature on different things. So let me set you guys down. So let me just lay out everything that we have to show today. Okay, so we're gonna go, go ahead and lay them out. Now these are just some of my personal favorites. Uh, if you guys, you know, find something else that, that works for you, that's fine. So we have thermal imagers in the form of this gun style, high quality thermal imager by Hick Micro. And then we also have the Klein Tools Compact that fits in the bag really easy. That's a thermal imager. High end, low end is what I'm gonna say on that. Then we have these temp guns, Harbor Freight. This is around like $26. 
And this one, this one is a 12 to 1, has a little laser that you can turn on and off and it gives you the temperature. Very good, it's, I've had it for a long time. Went out and got the Kuwaits from Amazon. So this one is also a 12 to 1, pretty good range. This one, I do like the display a lot. And then the, uh, I don't know if you can see, gives you like a dot projector on where you're pointing at. So depending on how like far you are, you can see what you're uh, reading. So that one's kind of cool. We will see if all these are within range of each other because I do get different readings sometimes. We'll do a test in a bit. This one is the Eric Hill. This one, I don't think it gives me the, okay, it's a 12 to one, it's on the other side. So these are all 12 to one. The one that always, I think takes a while to read is the Kuwaits. Okay, so yeah, 102, 105, 106. Then we got the Klein. Uh, this is a probe thermometer. I broke it. I don't even want to open it. But it also has the infrared, so I'm using it as an infrared. So we check there, 106. So I keep it there so that I have this in my pocket versus carrying you know, something a little bit bigger. So we got those. Obviously, when you check temp splits and you want to stick it in the duct, these are the some of the best ones you can get. Magnet, folding tip, that one's great. Then you got this one that is the Klein Thermal Imager. Now the image on this one is not perfect. I will show you the clear difference, you know, versus a high quality, but it gives you basically like a temperature map. Now it can, you know, pick up things, but it's not going to be the best quality. And on this one, it calibrates very often. So every now and then if you're w moving it around and it freezes on you, it's because it's calibrating and you got to wait, you know, like two seconds and it'll come back. So you see how it's just like more of a color map, you know, really than anything. Um, if you want a high end one, I would recommend Hic Micro. Camera quality is like top notch. And then it's going to be hard because of the glare, but you can see the actual temperature guns. You can actually see the shapes of everything. You can see my hand there. And then if I grab something, you can make out a lot better on this camera versus the Klein. So this one, like I said, high uh, quality, very rugged. And of course, it's going to be a little bit bigger than the rest. But these are all great in their own right. I have a video on the Hick Micro. And I just wanted to discuss, you know, the different variations that we have. So like I was saying, I think temperature is one of those things that's, I think it's getting more popular. I think everybody has some sort of combination of these uh, kinds of tools. I just don't think it gets talked about enough. So temp split is something you always want to check and that's what that one's for. You can check temp split with these. It's an easy way just to go in there and kind of, you know, point at the, the return, get a good reading, point at the supply vent and get another reading, get your split split there or show the customer, Hey, we're getting a good, you know, 50 degrees out of your vent, uh, checking all the vents. They're all, you know, within range everything's good and they have a peace of mind i have a lot of uh, commercial customers so i don't really do residential but if i can go around and show them their vents and that they're working uh, a lot of these ceilings i can't reach i don't want to be putting up a ladder in a dining area where people are eating and stuff i can just walk around check all my temperatures and then show them to the customer um, if you want to take it a step further you can use one of these um, these are really good to check hot spots and leakage or infiltration. So when you go up to a walk-in or any kind of door, if you're checking AC, right, 
go up to the doors, go up to the windows, <clears throat> see if you're getting a heat uh, coming in or, you know, cold air coming out of your doors, windows, things like that. I have a walk-in that I just went to verify, you know, with this tool. And we actually had a bad insulated wall in the corner and I was able to, sh to pinpoint where a lot of condensation was coming in through. So a lot of heat against a freezer door was causing all this condensation and ice buildup in that corner or in that side. And then we pinpointed it to the corner and I was able to verify that and show them when another company could not figure it out and told them that it was normal. So you can go in there with, with something like this, a thermal imager, or you can get this. This is on the lower end. This one is 250 to 300 bucks. These are around 400 bucks and you can get even better ones, you know, as you go up in price. So those are good. Uh, this is very comparable and they have new stuff coming out all the time to where they have like, they're starting to do pocket size uh, imagers and they're comparable to like a FLIR, FLIR, I don't know how you say it, F-L-I-R. Uh, That's what they're comparable to. You can find these on True Tech Tools also. So if you guys shop on True Tech Tools, you can get it there. You can also get it off Amazon. I have a link to their Amazon store if you want to go check them out on Amazon. Um, I have a link to everything here. These are off Amazon. Like I said, that one's Harbor Freight. So if you guys are interested in any of these, I will link everything. If you guys don't know, I have a tool link. Everything I use is linked in there. So right now I'm going to test uh, them out and check the temperatures. All right, so I, we've been working on our AC. And I gave it out not too long ago. So I got my little setup here. Just turned it on. And we can check, you know, at the vent like this. Now this one is not that high, but in my commercial buildings, I it's not within reach. I can't feel for air. I can't see if the, the AC is on or anything. So we can use an infrared to quickly check and show the customer that the AC is on or it's working and and I need to see if this one's not calibrated. Let's check all these out. Okay, so here's my um, Harbor Freight one. Reads the same as my kind. So these two are reading 60. This one's reading 45 for some reason. Here's the true or Eric Hill reading the same at 60. Let's try our Hick Micro. See how clear that picture is? You can see the vent there. And it's going to tell you in the top, the in the image, what's the hottest, the coldest, and what you're pointing at. And it'll show you these spots with the little crosshairs. So this one's reading about 55, 60, you know, in that range. And then if we put up our client tools, you can clearly see the difference in quality. Not to say that this is a bad um, tool to have. It's reading 60 as well. Gives you a color map so you can see that it's cold, warm around, and then green in between so it gives you the different range but you cannot see a clear picture with this as you can with the hick micro all right guys so i hope you enjoyed today's video um, i just want to go over one of the tools that i use probably the most on a daily basis which is a temperature gun now they come in different styles you can use probes you can use the uh, gun style with the trigger you can use a fancy thermal imager, which I'm really loving this Hick Micro one. And you can get a, a good reading, something to show your customer, something to go in if you don't know the layout of the, system, of the building and you have a bunch of units lined up outside and let's say one's not working, you can go around, check all the vents um, just by walking around and see which ones are off. So that way you know if it's the front of the house, the back of the house, you know, what area you're working on. And of course the honorable mention 
if you want to go wireless to check temperature it's going to be these uh field piece psychrometers um you can check supply and return with those i need to buy more I'm trying to work up my probe setup uh you can set those up if you have a vent that you can stick this in or if you make a hole in your duct you can set these up and check all your splits like that and then you have the app to kind of give you a better idea of that how the system is doing um so if you want to go wireless that's what i recommend so the kuwait's one i'm a little disappointed it's not reading near what the other ones are so i'm going to reach out to kuwait's i bought this one myself even though they sent me out you know their different meters to test out this one i did purchase on my own and uh it was cheap but i'm going to see if they'll exchange it or if there's a way to calibrate it because it's way off if you guys want links to these i will link the eric hill i think this one's a pretty solid choice i like the the screen on this one very uh simple way to go around and check like i said i work in restaurants a lot so if people are eating and they need to check the vents in the area this is the best way to do that instead of grabbing a ladder and and <laughs> messing with with their uh their eating time I really love this Klein one that's a probe and an infrared in one, but I broke it. So I'm going to be getting a new one soon, but for now, this is the slimmest infrared that I can carry, so I'm still going to use it. Uh, they do make another one that is the like electric tester, um, the non-contact voltage tester, so that you can use that tool, and it has an infrared built in. I don't really like carrying a non-contact voltage tester because my meter does that as a function. So I'd rather have something else. This was a probe. I just, I broke it. So I'll be getting uh, another one soon. <clears throat> uh, this one I will also link. Uh, my Home Depot does not have um, these two. So I had to order these. I'll link them for you guys. Uh, this is a great way to keep a thermal imager in your bag if you don't want the big style and you want something on the lower end. But as you saw, the quality is not up to par with something like a high-end thermal imager. So I have the Hick Micro B1L. It does fantastic and it's $399. Something that you can use a lot. I've been able to pinpoint, like I said, heat infiltration, heat loss, um, leakage, I can, uh, I've used it to check compressors too, and I've been able to see in an RTU where there's like a three, three compressor setup or, or whatever, can actually see what's one, which one is leaking or low, um, cause that one will be overheating. So we have that. You can actually see the refrigerant lines with this too. I've shown, I've shown pictures on my Instagram of me checking a hot gas bypass valve and you can actually see where the refrigerant is flowing through just using this because the camera is like really good on this so you can see the refrigerant flow you can check uh heating issues you can check acs you can check refrigeration equipment these have so many uses if you are checking anything electrical it's a good way to check loose connections uh bad connections at that over on your contactor, you can see if any wires are heating up, uh, breaker, breakers are getting hot, um, your disconnects that are faulty, you can use a thermal imager or even just a thermometer to check those things. I've been able to check that, see bad connections, see faulty stuff, uh, wiring, breakers. If they're overloading a circuit, you know, they're plugging everything into one uh, circuit, causing a breaker to act up overheat you can do all of that with this and uh, it's also good to know your ambient temperature when you're working on condensers and stuff and it's something that you might not think about but you need it daily you need to check uh, supply and return uh, temperatures uh, I wouldn't even get into like superheating subcool but you, temperatures are the biggest uh, thing as an HVAC tech that you're checking you want to know if you're overheating if you're cooling, if you're not cooling, if you're losing temperature, temperatures related to pressure, you have all this uh, other stuff that you can check if you have this 
in your arsenal of tools. So just something to think about, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, hope that helped. Hope it kind of shed some light for you guys. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'm going to go through the comments from now on and try and answer a lot of them in video form. Um, I will leave a link to everything, like I said. And please remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys.